Hello and welcome to this video entitled Enterprise Vault Post Processing and Monitoring Backups. My name is Phil Walters and I'm a consultant working for a company called Adeptech. So in this demonstration we're going to look at things like safety copies, post processing and how we monitor backups. This follows on from the previous demonstration that hopefully you've already seen. So I'm starting in the admin console and I want to make a change to the safety copy setting and also what triggers post-processing. So we'll go to Vault Store Groups and I want to change it on the Information Management Vault Store. So go to the Properties. And on the Safety Copies tab, I'm going to change this default behavior to Yes in the original location. The other options there are No, Remove Immediately After Archiving, which isn't recommended in a production environment, or the new option that came in at EV11, which is Yes in the Storage Queue. This is the traditional way of doing it, so we're keeping the safety copy within Exchange. So it's warning me I need to restart the storage service, but I want to make another change first. So if I go to the properties of my open Vault Store partition, go to the Backup tab, and I'm going to change what triggers post-processing to using a trigger file. So with a traditional file and folder backup, we use the archive attribute to tell Enterprise Vault that all the files in the Vault Store partition have been backed up. So now at the end of the backup, we're going to write a trigger file to the Vault Store partition. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a minute. So let's OK that. And I do need to restart the storage service now. Right, so that's restarted. The other thing I want to do is make a change within the message queues so that we can see the results of post-processing. This is something you should never do in a production environment. I'm just doing this to show you that entries are written to the A1 queue. So we want to do it for the mailbox task and for this queue here. So if I go to the properties of this queue, I'm going to switch on what we call journaling for this queue. What this will mean is that we can actually see a permanent copy of all the messages that are written to this queue. The A1 messages are telling EV to do post-processing, i.e. to turn an item into a shortcut. They're only there very temporarily until the archiving task does its work, so you need to be very quick to see them. So we're going to do this just so that you can see those messages. So let's go back to the admin console. And what I want to do now is to trigger an archiving run. So I'm just going to right click here and choose run now. Choose archiving. And I want to do in selected mailboxes, archive all items. And I'm going to choose a user called Diana Palmer. Okay, so it's now doing an archive run. So we probably should wait for a minute or so just until this is archived all the items within her mailbox. So the next thing we want to do is to switch to the SQL Server. And I've already got a query op window open. And I'm going to query the Information Management Vault Store database. And what I want to do is to first of all see all the entries within a table called Journal Archive. So you can see I've got a lot of entries within this table. And you'll see that there's lots of entries here where it says backup complete is zero. OK, so once we've added the trigger file, then they will be set to backup is complete. The entries within the journal archive table remain there normally for 32 days. I can also look at the watch file table. The watch file table will only contain entries if we're using safety copies. 
So we changed the properties of the vault store to use safety copies. So now the watch file table is keeping a record of all the items that are waiting to be backed up, i.e. Uh, safety copies currently. If we just go over to the client, you can see that these are all the items that have been changed into pending shortcuts. So they're waiting for backup. So let's now do the backup. Well, we're not actually going to do a backup. We're going to simulate it. So let's go and have a look at the batch file that I've created. So the first two commands at the top there are putting the vault stores and the index locations into what we call backup mode. This is like a read only mode. If you want to get more details about where I got those commands from, then check out the other demonstration video. Then we've got a command that is echoing the trigger file to the root of the information management vault store partition. So information management PTN2 is the folder and we're going to put this file ignore archive bit trigger .txt, into the root of the vault store. Now normally that will be done after the backup is complete. So after we've gone into backup mode we do the backup. But in this particular demonstration we're not actually going to do the backup. We're going to simulate it. Then these two commands down here are taking the vault stores and the index locations back out of backup mode and that will trigger the it reading the trigger file. It will get turned to dot old and then post-processing can start. So let's now run this batch file. So you can see it's putting the vault stores and index locations into backup mode, creating the trigger file, and then taking them out of backup mode again. So if we go to the vault store partition now, which is under E, Enterprise Vault Stores, and then Information Management Partition 2, you can see you've got ignore archive bit trigger dot old. So that file has been renamed because otherwise it checks the vault store partition every hour and it would keep on marking items as being backed up, which we don't want. So it's going to ignore this file now. Let's now go back to SQL and see what's happened here. So we're on the SQL server. So let's just run the watch file table command again. And you can see that all the entries have been cleared from the watch file table. This is an indication that it can go now and do post-processing. And for the journal archive table, if we scroll over here, we'll see that all the backup complete Entries are now set to 1 because all those items have been marked as being backed up. Let's go and look at the message queues now. So I'm going to flip back to the Enterprise Vault server. Open up my server manager. And if we go to journal messages, you can see we've got a lot of post-processing messages. So these were the messages that were placed on the A1 queue after the end of the backup. It read the trigger file, so therefore it marked all the files as being backed up. So it put entries for all the items that are going to be turned into shortcuts. Let's now go back to the admin console and just look at the properties of the Vault Store partition. So on the backup tab, we have this details button. And you can see that it secured 11 items in the previous scan. So that's what we've just done here. And it says there are no unsecured items. This is a great way of confirming that nothing is outstanding. And the final thing I want to do is switch back to the client and show you that those mail items are now turned into shortcuts because they've been post-processed.
So that brings to the end of this demonstration of post-processing and monitoring backups with Enterprise Vault. Thanks for listening.